Hey guys, come on downstairs. Welcome to a new little series on the channel with Flight Simulator. Uh, we're going to do a career mode. And uh, yes, I know there's uh, several career mode um, options on uh, on PC online. And uh, they're kind of not the, the way I want to go though. Because what they, at least all the ones that I have seen, they turn into like, you're like the CEO of an airline. And that's not what I'm looking for. I just want a personalized one pilot's career career mode. So that's what we're going to do. And I'm just going to make it up. So, but let's uh, um, establish some uh, ground rules for this uh, pilot career that we're going to do. Uh, we're going to start with a balance of $100,000. We buy all of our aircraft. The first plane that we buy will be a used plane and we will add five uh, units of wear and tear, which uh, you'll see a little bit later. And uh, we choose our home base airport. We complete a minimum of, of 10 jobs at that home base airport before changing our home base to a different airport. And uh, I'm working on an aircraft price list. That's a work in progress right now in, uh, in one of these one of these episodes in the near future, uh, well before we're able to buy another airplane, uh, we will get to that uh, aircraft price list. All right, let's talk about some rates here. We're going to pay for our fuel, Avgas, $12 per gallon, jet fuel, $8 per gallon, and earnings, $50 per planned nautical mile. Uh, so I, I had to make some decisions here. So because I want this to be, I mean, I want it to be semi-realistic, but not so realistic that it takes me like five years of real life to buy my next airplane, you know? So I either had to make the airplane prices unrealistic and keep the earnings realistic, or I had to make the earnings a little bit unrealistic and keep the airplane prices realistic, which is what I chose to do. So the earnings are gonna be kind of outlandish um, at times, but the key is we're going to just, we're going to keep it consistent. So $50 per plan nautical mile. We have to pay for our ramp parking, uh, monthly, uh, $450 per month ramp parking spot. When we are able to buy a jet, uh, we will, I'm going to require us to uh, keep it in a hangar, which will be $2,000 a month for hangar rental. Uh, some planes uh, will require a co-pilot and sometimes I might just choose to have a co-pilot to deal with uh, air traffic control and that kind of just that side stuff depending on the plane we're in. Um, so we got to pay them 25% of our trip earnings. Aircraft maintenance is monthly. Uh, piston airplanes $500 a month. Turbo props $800. Private jet 1300 Airliner 2500 a month. Uh, I'm not sure how realistic that is, but I thought we'd put that that little bit of a feat in there. All right, so now some uh, damage and some uh, ways to kind of punish ourselves for bad performance. Uh, crash repair fee for piston airplane five thousand dollars, turbo prop seventy five hundred, private jet ten thousand, airliner twenty thousand, and each time. We crash, if we should crash, we add one plus one wear and tear. When we get to the, uh, if we get to the uh, max 10 wear and tear, that totals the airplane and we'll have to buy a new one. Uh, landing off the runway will be one half of our crash repair fee. And if we bounce on landing, it'll be one fifth of our crash repair fee to repair the landing gear, uh, just hypothetically. So. Our starting balance is $100,000. We're buying a used Cessna 152, and it costs on the market about $45,000, which will leave us with $55,000 as our starting balance. All right, so we've chosen North Las Vegas Airport to be our first home airport uh, out of La uh, North Las Vegas, Nevada. So we'll be doing jobs out of here for the next little while. Starting on December 15th, 2022 at 125 p.m. And uh, our briefing for this job is pretty simple. The state or the uh, federal government probably 
is uh, paying us to fly a engineer in to inspect uh, something about Hoover Dam. So we'll be flying him from North Las Vegas to Boulder City Municipal Airport. And uh, as you can see there, a few things to be aware of always from uh, Las Vegas is uh, Nellis Air Force Base is very close and uh, just off to our east and to the south of us is McCarran uh, or Harry Reid International Airport. So we just got to be aware of those two things and uh, we'll get into what that means in a little while. All right, let's fire our little used Cessna up. Prime it a couple of times. We've got the mixture rich, throttle cracked open. All right, so she fired up for us. Let's get our navigation set. We're uh, navigating around a VOR that is just a little bit north of Boulder City, the uh, BLD VOR. Clearance to taxi. Ground, Cessna Bravo Golf Tree, ready to taxi east. Departure with Papa. Cessna Bravo Golf Tree taxi to and hold short of runway tree zero left using taxiway Charlie Bravo Kilo. Contact tower on one one nine er decimal one five when ready. Taxi to and hold short runway tree zero left using taxiway Charlie Bravo Kilo Cessna Bravo Golf Tree. Okay, all right, we are cleared to taxi to runway 30 left. Now, uh, quick disclaimer, I'm not a pilot in real life, as uh, that will become painfully obvious at points, but the goal is to get better and uh, learn new things. So I have no idea what it means uh, to have Oscar or uh, to have Papa. Uh, maybe that is the uh, <laughs> nickname of the dam inspector. Yeah, we got Papa. We're bringing him to Boulder City. Check out the dam. No, I don't know. I, I don't know what that means. So, um, any pilots out there want to throw me some uh, tips, pointers, and uh, or just make fun of me, go for it. Open and welcome to all comments. <laughs> and uh, so we're heading south towards uh, runway 30 left. We'll be taking off to the north uh, with a departure to the east. And uh, we'll kind of be cutting right between Nellis Air Force Base and uh, McCarran International Airport. And we got a van sitting up there. All right. What are you doing up there? Sometimes the simulators like dodge the uh, airport service vehicles simulator instead of flight simulator. Heck, sometimes, sometimes they're on the bloody runway when you're trying to take off. All right, well, you know what? We're just going to use this because uh, we don't need that much runway anyway for this little Cessna. Uh, we'll stop and... Uh, North Las Vegas Tower, Cessna Bravo Golf Tree, ready at runway tree zero, left east departure. Get our clearance for takeoff. Cessna Bravo Golf Tree, altimeter tree zero decimal, two tree wind calm east departure approved. Cleared for takeoff runway tree zero left. 
All right, Clear so. For takeoff runway tree zero left Cessna Bravo Golf Tree. So obviously I'm using the uh, built-in air traffic control system on Flight Simulator. It's not the greatest thing in the world. That's well documented. But, uh, it's basically the same as we had back in 2004 <laughs> and uh, hasn't changed much. So there hasn't been any, you know, groundbreaking uh, air traffic control updates in the sim uh, that are a part of the sim and not third party. But you know what, we'll make do and just do the best we can with it. Uh, I'd just as soon have it as not have it. Uh, despite its uh, obvious shortcomings, we'll make it work. And uh, one of the obvious shortcomings will be apparent here really, really soon. Okay, wow, I waited way too long to rotate. Uh, should rotate just at about 55 knots, and I think I rotated at 70. So, uh, if we had our trim set more uh, for takeoff, it probably would have probably would have picked the plane up. Anyway, so uh, things that sorry, things that we'll learn as we go. So uh, one of the early things with the air traffic control that I learned is that it's... So I've been, I've been playing Flight Simulator for almost a year now. And uh, I've done a lot of stuff with uh, autopilot <laughs> and... Uh, North Las Vegas Tower Cessna Bravo Golf Tree continue for east departure. And while doing that, I've just let the uh, quote-unquote co-pilot take care of ATC. And so I'm finding out in this these first couple of flights here that it's really difficult to run the ATC while keeping your, uh, your uh, pitch and uh, just keeping the attitude of your airplane stable <laughs> at times. Uh, because I would have to take my hand off the yoke to get into the air traffic control. So, after a couple of episodes of this, I finally figured uh, that I needed to program a button on my uh, yoke to open up the uh, air traffic control menu and then use my keyboard to uh, select so that I, did, I don't have to take my hand off the yoke at all. Um, to uh, run the ATC system uh, menus and all that. So you'll notice a few times I'm running the ATC in those these first couple of episodes where uh, the plane gets a little bit crazy while I'm trying to deal with ATC, trying to juggle a few too many things uh, hands off. The other shortcoming with air traffic control is obviously uh, we are in Class B airspace and I have no way of getting clearance until the uh, the controller that has me hands me off to the McCarran Tower. If I go into the menu to the McCarran Tower or to the Nellis Tower, uh, either one of them, there isn't an option to ask for uh, transition into to uh, Class B airspace, which I'm in currently right now illegally because I don't have clearance yet, but I have no way of getting clearance. So that's a shortcoming of the ATC, but that's, you know. It's just a game, and we're doing the best we can. So I, th I think if I remember correctly, uh, we get handed off here to Nellis Tower and get our, uh, our clearance to uh, transition Class B airspace. And there, off to the left, is Nellis Air Force Base and off to our right would be McCarran International down by the uh, skyline 
or uh, the uh, strip downtown area of Las Vegas. And the other things that I forgot to do on this early flight was to All right, we'll take care of this ATC situation quickly. North Las Vegas Tower says the Bravo Golf tree frequency change. All right, so the other thing that I forgot to do was to lean lean my mixture. Approach Cessna Bravo Golf Tree is type Cessna 152 4 miles east of North Las Vegas, 4,800 feet. Request clearance to transition Bravo airspace. Cessna Bravo Golf Tree, Nellis Approach. Squawk 5151. All right, let's make sure we don't get shot down by Nellis. Um. So yeah, I, I forgot to uh, lean my mixture both before taxi and as well when I uh, reached Squawk 5151 Cessna Bravo Golf Tree when I reached 3,000 feet Cessna Bravo Golf Tree Radar Contact 4 miles east of North Las Vegas 5,000 feet Clear to the Bravo airspace So we're at 5,000 feet right now We, I should have leaned the mixture at 3,000 feet and I'm not, you know, I'm not even sure if I did it at all in this first flight Things that I've learned since since taking these first few flights there's a good look at Nellis Air Force Base as we ignore the ATC. Won't be the first time, or it's not the first time, won't be the last time. Actually, maybe it is the first time, but it won't be the last time. Guarantee you that. My kids are actually being pretty quiet. I'm very, very pleased. I might get this whole video in. We'll see. I haven't changed their diapers yet. That's a bad on my part. What is it? Oh, oh, Judas, it's noon. Good heavens. Dad of the year. I'm going to have to pause this and go change their diapers. I'm sorry, guys. All right. So, see, I'm, I'm checking in with McCarran to see if I can get clearance to transition their airspace. So, I go into the tower, and all it's given me is request touch and go or request full stop landing. I can't do anything with airspace. So while Nellis knows that I've transitioned Class B airspace, McCarran has no idea, and they're wondering what the hell I'm doing on their radar. All right, so whenever you see the uh, screen do a transition like that, it means I've jumped ahead a little bit. Jumped ahead a little bit in our flight. And uh, here we're over East Las Vegas, actually down below us. I didn't notice it in the flight, but there's a look at the uh, LDS Las Vegas Temple right there. And when I was doing the flight, I didn't notice it. When I was cutting up the videos and chopping it up, I was like, oh my gosh, that looks like the temple. I Honestly, I, I think I've been around that area once, but I was younger and my parents drove up, up in there and I didn't know where the heck we were. So I had no idea it was clear over by these uh, eastern mountains in Vegas. No idea. There's a look out at Lake Mead. And we'll probably do several jobs that uh, center around Lake Mead in this area. I mean, there's really no... Like, our home base is in Las Vegas, but, man, we can travel as far away as I want to. I don't... I mean, I'm not going to give myself... Uh, boundaries or anything. It's just where we where we start, or where our home base is. I mean, if we want to fly to California, we're going to fly to California. If we want to go cross country, we'll do it. I don't think we'll. I don't think I'll want to do that because. Uh, well, I don't know. We'd make a lot of money per nautical mile, but I might wait until I have a faster airplane. It would take take way too long in this little Cessna going 100 or uh, what are we at 90 knots? Yeah. So, uh, we'll, for the most part, try to stick around this uh, general area. Might take a long trip into California, LA area, San Diego area, something like that. Might take an even longer trip up to northern Nevada. Maybe I think it's I think it takes longer to fly from Vegas to Reno than it does from Vegas to Los Angeles. So 
So Boulder City is just uh, just on the other side of those mountains that are dead ahead. And the uh, the Boulder uh, Vortac, VOR, is, uh, I think it's like right in those mountains. So I'm, I'm checking Vegas uh, McCarran Tower again just to see if I have the option to make them aware of myself, but I do not. And so we'll go back to our flight following from uh, Nellis Approach. And uh, if you're familiar with the navigation system, uh, the uh, VOR navigation, you can see we're pretty much right on line to get to the uh, BLD Vortac. Take a look to our left at Lake Mead. And the closer you get to the VOR station, the more uh, ski wampus your uh, indicator goes. So right now we need to we need to go left to, to catch that uh, radial that we're trying to catch. And I can't remember what that radial is exactly. It looks like it was like one one thirty or something like that. So the Cessna 152, oh, okay, so uh, yeah, this gets a little bit sketchy here. This is why we uh, would like McCarran uh, Tower to be aware that we're here is because uh, we've got commercial planes landing and uh, departing McCarran and we're right, we pretty much are right in their path. So we probably, we probably should be at a higher altitude so that they can fly under us. I think that would be the way to go. I don't know for sure. If you're a pilot, let me know. Or, like, what do you have to do to fly in the, these areas? You can see this. Here's a commercial plane coming in right here. Oh, wave. Hey, everybody. Well, wow, that was actually closer than I thought. <laughs> All right, well, that makes me a little bit nervous. I guess I probably need, uh, I don't know, if I have the, uh, some McCarran charts. Maybe I could probably find the altitude I should be at to avoid their all their approach procedures. I don't know. I'm sure there's something that I'm doing wrong here. Get slapped with an FAA fine. Okay, so let's uh, check in with Boulder City Municipal. It's our, the nearest airport to us. Let's uh, let's first uh, let's check out their weather. Kilo Actually, Kilo first. Alright, so they actually have a, a pretty solid wind. Okay, so they've got some wind going down there. Nine knots, which I, I don't know what is it, like ten, about 10, 11 miles an hour, something like that. Kilo Bravo Victor Uniform Traffic Cessna Bravo Golf Tree 7 miles northwest 5,200 feet inbound to land runway tree tree. Okay, so the wind is coming from almost due north. So we're going to want to circle around and land. Right now we're heading south. So we have, we when we get to the ground, if we were to land, go in this direction, we would have a tailwind, which we don't want. So we're going to circle around and land from south to north into uh, about a 10, 11 mile an hour headwind, uh, nine knots. So we've requested a runway that's heading in a more northerly direction. So since we've got a circle around, let's go ahead and uh, give this uh, imaginary guy that we are uh, taking on this trip a bird's eye view of Hoover Dam. Why not? Why the heck not? We'll circle around. I mean, we got to circle around anyway, so it might be just a tiny bit further out of our way than we want to circle, but 
we'll give him a little sightseeing for his money. What do you say? He's okay with it. All right. So with these scenarios that I make up, they're not. I'm not gonna overdo it. You know, I'm not gonna make them overly, uh, overly detailed or just like just simple, simple. Why are we flying here to there? Uh, what's the job? I'm not gonna overdo it. We're flying a dude to inspect Hoover Dam. Federal government's paying for it. Whatever. Maybe have to uh, make up why why this person's willing to pay such outlandish prices. Because <laughs> I think uh, this was a 30 nautical mile flight, so it was about $1,500 to go 30 miles is what we're charging. <laughs> That's a little steep. But hey, it just brings a method to our madness and uh, gives us a little direction in this otherwise directionless game. It gets kind of boring to just fly from point A to point B and have no direction. So this gives us a little uh, substance to it and uh, gives us a reason to uh, to do what we do. Uh, gives us a reason to try different planes. I kind of got stuck flying the airliners and uh, the uh, Kodiak that I bought. Um, and those are kind of the only two planes that I flew. And I was like, you know, I know some of these, uh, the planes like the stock planes that come with the program are not great but why not learn to fly them anyway just i mean learn to fly them all why not so and we'll see i don't know what our next plane will be that we'll that we'll buy if we'll just kind of progress you know progress to the cessna 172 uh, maybe we'll buy a cub and uh do some uh some bush flying i don't know it's totally wide open also if you're following along this series uh, and you think of jobs to do in the area, like if you think of a job to do in Las Vegas that you'd like to see, come up with your own. Simp keep it simple. Don't, out don't overdo it. Keep it simple. Give me an airport to fly to and the reason why we're flying there from uh, North Las Vegas Airport. Or if the job is to bring somebody back to North Las Vegas from somewhere, I can do that too. I'm not going to fly return trips for the most part. That's just overly cumbersome. Uh, so what what we'll do is we'll just we'll fly the the leg of the trip that the job is about. Like I'm not going to fly this guy to Boulder City, let him inspect Hoover Dam, and then fly him back. I, no, I'm just going to fly him to Boulder City and call it good. He can hitch a ride back if, with a, an Uber or something if he wants. I don't care. But we're only we're only paid to get him there. That's that's the point I'm trying to make. Because I don't want it to be overly cumbersome and like do all these return flights and that's just overly realistic and overly yeah just too much. Although it would make us extra extra money if we charged for that flight mileage, but it's like it's just backtracking flight mileage. I don't want to do that. Um, so. So we won't do really do return trips. However, I do want I do want to acknowledge that our next job will start from north the plane back somehow. So I'm going to double the fuel that it's taking and just charge or just uh, charge ourselves fuel to get back. Um, it's not it's not that significant, but it will make fuel cost us a little bit more. All right, so we're almost out over Lake Mead. Uh, Hoover Dam is just off to our right and uh, below us. Let's take this view and see. There you go. There you go. Hoover Dam is uh, almost straight below our uh, left wing tip right now. Just draw a straight line down from the left wing tip, and you can see Hoover Dam in that little narrow canyon right there. This game's absolutely beautiful, and I know in these videos I don't have a good enough capture card to 
really do this game justice i apologize so hopefully you just like the content and you're not not watching this for stunning you know 4k i, I can't do that right now not at the moment um but i wish there's a way to like show what this game looks like in 4k on my on my tv when i'm playing it because it's it's absolutely incredible color wise and uh depth like the depth of colors and the shadows it is just and the lighting effects oh my gosh man it's incredible all right hoover dam just below us pretty cool pretty cool look at hoover dam yeah don't mind the, the highway over there that looks pretty crazy focus on the dam the roads can sometimes look a little bit a little bit out of sync in this sim but for the most part everything looks pretty cool so all right so there's our look at hoover dam let's get back in the cockpit here start heading back to the west and we'll uh, circle around put this bird down collect our pay and uh, see where we're at before job number two we've got about I don't know we'll be down in about nine minutes or so I think nine minutes from now something like that we should be touching down wills hitting the uh, asphalt I think maybe this runway was concrete I can't remember what it was you get my point So the mighty Colorado River is down below us. We'll uh, probably do several jobs along the Colorado River too before we're through in this Vegas area. And obviously I'm, I'm going to be thinking about the next place. I'll always be thinking about the next place if you have suggestions on uh, where you'd like to see our next home base be at. Let me know. But we have to do at least 10 jobs in this area before we move on. Uh, we can do more. You know, some areas might offer more of a of a selection of jobs to do. I don't know. We just got to at least do 10. So we're getting ready to land. Uh, off to our right is the airport and uh, Boulder City. And uh, just a little bit of added pressure to these landings. If, if we botch these landings, it's going to cost us money. Kilo Bravo Victor Uniform Traffic Cessna Bravo Golf Tree, 6 miles east, 4,000 feet inbound to land runway tree tree. On some trips, a bounced landing won't be super costly, maybe, because they're long trips. But this is a short trip. I mean, we bounced the landing and cost ourselves $1,000 uh, plus fuel. We... You know we're not making any money because this we're getting paid fifteen hundred dollars for this trip so uh let's not bounce this landing and have it cost us two-thirds of that all right i had to go tell my kids not to slam the door sorry if you heard the door slam in the background um i'm bribing them with ice cream by the way if they'll be quiet they can have some ice cream which is more parent of the year activity because it's lunchtime. Well, maybe I'll uh, add on lunch too. They got to eat lunch and then they can have ice cream. We'll see how it goes. Being a stay at home dad is that's all the joys. All the joys in the world. Actually, I love it. I'm not going to lie. It's, it's quite nice. And my kids are really, really pretty good. For a four year old and a two and a half year old, they do pretty good. All right, so we've uh, let Boulder City Municipal Airport know where we are, and uh, see the runway we're headed to right here. Make sure we land on the right one.
I think I need, I think, uh, and I can't remember what runway I told him I was going to land on. We're going to have to wait and find out and see. Here we go. Kilo Bravo Victor Uniform Traffic Cessna Bravo Golf Tree is on final runway tree tree to land. All right, so runway 33, we're going to turn on to final. I think we might be jumping the gun a little bit here, too. I don't think we're quite lined up to call it final, but we do it anyway. Yeah, where the heck am I going? This is definitely not on final. What am I doing? Let's just, okay, guys, I got better. I got, I, I've done about eight of these flights now to this point before I was able to do some commentary on this. And, uh, I've gotten a little bit better. This is pretty bad. Why tell the airport I'm on final when, uh, I'm obviously, uh, not on final? <laughs> okay. Should have told him I'm on base. Maybe I just did, maybe I didn't know where I was. I don't know. We're gonna have to. I mean, we're we're base, we're kind of making a circling landing here. What are we doing? All right, we gotta watch our speed. We're going to want to land right around 50 knots uh, with flaps fully extended our stall speed is 40 uh, we don't want to flirt with that speed so I'd say around 50 I know there's an exact number and I don't know what it is But I think just from uh, trial and error, I've learned that 60 is a little, is maybe too fast, and I don't want to flirt with uh, I don't want to flirt with stall speed, which is 40. So if we can land around 50 knots, should hopefully be pretty smooth. All right, now we're on final. Now announce on final. Final approach into Boulder City. Still coming in a little bit hot. I can't see my flaps lever, but I'm pretty sure that I have them fully extended at this point. As we cut some throttle. Yeah, and I never once did lean my mixture, did I? Not one time. So our mixture is still rich, which is okay at this point, because we're under under 3,000 feet. We're down to about 2,400 feet. All right, guys. A little bit stressful here. Don't want to cost us money. Not on this short trip. We didn't make enough money to bounce this landing. Getting a little shaky. All right, steady. <laughs> Again, there's a nine knot headwind coming a little bit from the uh, right too, so. We're going to have to use our rudder here a little bit to straighten us out. Oh, come on. Rudder and touch. All right, that wasn't bad. That was pretty soft. There was a little skip. I'm not going to call that a bounce. I'm going to call it a little skip. Just a tiny little skip. Trust me, you'll know when we bounce. You'll know when we bounce. Considering the wind and the rudder I had to use right there and how light this plane is, that was definitely not a bounce.
Tiny, tiny little skip. Just a little, just, just nicked the tire. Trust me, there, there's a bounce coming up in the next, I don't know, sometime in the next eight episodes. You'll know when we bounce, trust me. This plane's pretty light. All right. So I gave myself a tiny bit of leeway there. But that that little uh, that wasn't enough to do damage. You'll know when we've done some damage. You'll know when we hit hard enough. Okay. We're safely into Boulder City. First job. Shut her down. All right. So that whole flight took about 30 minutes, 29 minutes. Went 30 miles, 30 nautical miles. You can see I had one takeoff, one landing, just so you know I'm not like doing three different landings and redoing them. And we burned 2.76 gallons of fuel, which uh, is doubled. And here we are. Boulder City Municipal Airport. Boulder City, Nevada. Looks like they have a nice little golf course right there by the airport. And uh, Lake Mead off in the distance, off to the right is Hoover Dam, which is what this job revolved around, an inspection at Hoover Dam. We got our guy there safely, and uh, let's see where we come out. As job one from uh, Career Mode Las Vegas is in the books. All right, we started with $55,000. We earned $1,500 on 30 nautical miles. Our fuel cost was $33.12. And since it's our first flight of December, we will pay our ramp parking fee, which was $450. So you can see if we would have uh, cost ourselves $1,000 by really bouncing on the runway, we would have come out uh, almost in the red. We would have made like 20 bucks on this trip. 17 bucks on the trip. So our ending balance today, $56,016.88 as we work towards buying newer and better aircraft. It's going to be a little while. We're going, this, this plane's going to be a workhorse for us. We're going to have plenty of jobs in this plane before we can move on. All right. Career mode, job number one on uh, flight simulator, mama's basement.